let's talk about the next one with the ninth pick. You took Mario Cristobal, uh, Miami, and yeah, sure, he's recruiting like an absolute animal, but the in-game coaching just still has a lot to be desired, you know? And offensively, they were fine. Okay, 39, top 40 team in points per game, top 50 team defensively. But with, with all of that... quarterback play, by the way. Bad quarterback play. Out there. But I do want to throw out there, like, how much NFL talent was on that team? Miami's roster? Yeah. Leonard Taylor. Good amount. The both of the safeties. Okay. You're looking at Matt Lee, the Maui Goa brothers, eventually. I mean, there is... There's a ton of talent on that team, and they're just uh, they're not winning Ruben games. Bain, or no, yeah, Ruben Bain. Ruben Bain will be an NFL talent. Um, Mark Fletcher is he going to be an NFL talent one of these days? Yeah, Maybe. probably. You know, and not to mention they just got Damian Martinez, right? Isn't that? Yeah, Martinez is the, the obviously Cam Ward's the big splash. I I still think that yes, was it a little bit disappointing year, but I do think I mean Miami was was going to take value. some time. It was yeah. gonna take some time. I'm still buying. I'm still buying Crystal Ball hype. I'm still buying Crystal Ball stock. I think they're gonna be a player this year in the ACC, uh, which, by the way, is the expectation. Like, it's not gonna be like, oh, we, like I'm not gonna change my total opinion on Crystal Ball if they compete for the ACC title game. That's the expectation in year three with with Miami there, with all the talent you bring in, all the money you've spent, NIL, and the the resources you put in this team. It. it I mean, with Clemson trying down, Florida State loses a ton. Eleven players got drafted, right? Was it? This is the year. Like you, you have to make something happen here, and especially, yeah. I mean, I know you, Tyler Van Dyke didn't work out with Shannon Dawson. Emory Williams tried to come in, he got hurt. I mean, Corey Brown was not be- not much better. I mean, I know you had some s- struggles offensively, but with Cam Ward coming in, there's no, there is no reason no excuses anymore for Mario Cristobal and his staff to not have a nine and three ten and two season and really do something I mean you're gonna see week one it's Florida right week one you have to make a statement there Billy Napier's a guy that's later on in this list right a guy that's really struggling not gonna have the same leash that Mario Cristobal has even though he's recruited very well as well and and he's played a harder schedule and he's probably has won just as many games as um, Miami has, or maybe one less, whatever it was. It's just interesting to see. Yeah. You know? He's had success in other places that he's been, right? Like FIU, like he coached that T.Y. Hilton team. He has an overall winning record at FIU, by the way. If you didn't which is know impressive. That, which is nuts, okay? He's an offensive line coach at Alabama, right? We know that offensive line coaches at Alabama end up, you know, being pretty decent coaches down the road seems like, or just assistant coaches, kind of that Bama uh, boot camp, if you will. And also, he obviously coached at Oregon, and he was literally promoted after being a coordinator there for after one year. And he did really well at Oregon, you know, and he recruited really well, and that's kind of like his, uh, his calling card is like these recruiting classes. And, you know, he he did fine, right, this year um, with Miami. He did fine. He had, he had brought in a good recruiting class. They were fourth overall. I say fine. He had a fantastic recruiting class, probably one of the better ones that Miami's had in however many years. So it's it's just like, what do you value the in-game coaching, right? And, and the job security of Mario Cristobal at this point. You know, it's like, that's the only reason why I wouldn't, you know, I would buy his stock really low, right? But I, I wouldn't buy it. Like if you were to draft this again, I probably would stick him at eight or nine, like in this range, maybe 10 because... While the upside is crazy, right? The upside is absolutely bonkers. There is some time. risk. Yeah, exactly. There is some risk to that stock, of course. So I do I do like Mario Cristobal, and I think it was weird drafting Joey McGuire over Mario Cristobal. And in hindsight, I think last year I probably should have done that and then come back and take Joey McGuire because he probably would have still been available at the 10th spot. Yeah. Yeah, you would, yeah, you would have probably taken Venables, but... Um, it, it worked out though. I I think for me, because you know, with the ten pick, I, I think I ended up cashing out pretty good. So, uh, but yeah, any other thoughts on Mario Cristobal? And like, is this this is this is probably where you would draft him again, right? Or I know you're higher on him than I am, but I I think you'd you'd have to consider him a little bit over Sonny Dykes, maybe, um, in terms of the, just the future projection. 
Uh, but in terms of security, yeah, this is obviously one of those. And that's part of the reason why um, you took, I believe you took Jake, Jake Dickert over Billy Napier was because they could go, they they went, they went the same, same record and Dickert's not on the hot seat and Billy Napier is. So we talked about the expectation, longevity and all that stuff, um, which is, yeah, ex exactly that. I do want to say though, that like we've talked about it with Oregon. We talked about it with Texas Tech. We talked about it with Mike Elko. Building the program the right way through the through the high school recruiting ranks, but also specifically through the offensive and defensive lines. Obviously, with Mark Crispo coming in, you believe you're going to have a damn good O-line, but that D-line is turning into something super, super scary and something that obviously uh, Miami is pretty excited to have. Yeah, I mean, they're a top 20 team in rushing yards a lot per game. Um, they were a top 30 team in sacks per game. Uh, last year, and that that that's a result of the defensive line, you know, and building that out. And uh, you know, while they didn't run the ball at a consistent rate last year, despite having struggles at quarterback, they're averaging five yards a carry on the offensive side of the ball. So that that's nuts. It's a, that's a top twenty performance right there from that team and that offensive line. So yeah, if they they could get things right, man, and this could this could go through the ceiling. This this is a stock that, you know, if you are buying low, it, it could absolutely shoot through the roof.